In this video, we're going to recap what we saw last video and then afterwards take a look at factors that affect how fast something dissolves as opposed to just how much dissolves in there. So let's go to our handout here and fill in some blanks. Uh, so we saw that the solubility is the maximum, maximum amount, maximum amount of solute you can dissolve in a specific or given quantity of solvent at a specific temperature because temperature affects how much can dissolve in something. And we saw you can describe solutions in three main ways based on their solubility. So you can have an unsaturated solution where you don't have the maximum amount dissolved. And so to test out an unsaturated solution is um, what you do is you'd add a crystal to your solution. And if the crystals get smaller or continues to dissolve, we know it was unsaturated because you can dissolve more. Uh, so for example, if you could fit 50 grams and you only have 25 grams dissolved in there, you're unsaturated. A saturated solution contains the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in that solution, in that solvent. And so you can't dissolve any more. So you, what you would do is to test it out, you would add a crystal of your solute. And if the crystal does not change in size, then you know you're not really dissolving anymore. Um, so you know that you're full. So if your solution can hold a maximum of uh, your solvent can hold a maximum of 50 grams of solute and you already put 50 grams in there, then you're saturated. And then we have something called a supersaturated solution, supersaturated solution. And that's where you've tricked your solution to actually hold more than, um, than it should. So if you're able to hold 50 grams, but you actually dissolve 60 grams in there, then you're super saturated. And I don't mean that you have 50 grams dissolved and then 10 grams swimming at the bottom. No, it's actually dissolved in there. Um, and so to test that out, what you would do is you would add a crystal to your super saturated solution and the crystal should grow larger if it was super saturated because it causes all the excess stuff to come out of the solution to crystallize and you'll see a whole bunch of crystallization occur. So that's what we saw um, in that first part of the video there. And then we saw that when we describe um, if something is soluble or not, there's some definitions that we have for that now. So if something is soluble, it means that one gram or more can dissolve in 100 mils of that solvent. If something is sparingly solvent, soluble, so it's not insoluble, but sparingly, so somewhat soluble, um, you can dissolve between 0.1 grams and 1 gram in 100 mils of solvent. And then if something is insoluble, that means you can dissolve less than 0.1 grams of solute in 100 mils of that particular solvent. So for example, water. And that's what solubility really refers to, how soluble something is. And then we saw that there are different factors that affect solubility. So for ionic comp, so for different compounds in general have different solubilities in water. Generally, we see ionic compounds are more soluble in water than molecular, but that's not always the case. We saw that there are some ionic compounds that don't dissolve um, in water. And so for, to determine solubility of ionic compounds, you have to take a look at um, the uh, solubility chart that we saw back in unit two. And that solubility chart is all based on the ion size and um, ion charges. Uh, and so we explained that in the previous video and you can go take a look at that in the slide deck as well. Um, now molecular compounds, how do you determine their solubility, how much can dissolve? Generally, um, the more polar the substance, the more it can dissolve in a polar solvent like water. And the less polar the, the substance, the less it can dissolve in a polar substance like water. So solubility of molecular compounds is typically affected by their polarity, um, especially when you're looking at the type of solvent you're dissolving it in as well. It's also affected by size, but for the most part, we look at polarity. Another factor that can affect um, the solubility of compounds that we saw or of substances that we saw was the temperature. So generally, if you want to dissolve a solid in a liquid, the solubility of solids and liquids will increase with uh, increasing temperature. So you can dissolve more solids in a hotter um, solvent than in a colder solvent. But the solubility of gases and liquids will actually decrease with increasing temperature. So for gases, it's the opposite. You can dissolve less in the hotter temperatures for gases. And um, temperature will typically not significantly affect the solubility of liquids um, in liquids, in other liquids, um, because they're already pretty miscible. They can already mix together quite well. Um, and the pressure was also another factor that can affect solubility. As you see here, as pressure goes up, solubility goes up for all those gases. So solubility of gases um, will typically um, um, increase with increased pressure, increases um, with increasing pressure. And it doesn't really affect the um, solubility of liquids or solids, the pressure that is, because um, they're not really compressible. You 
can't compress them. Then we saw some practical applications of this solubility in action. Um, so we saw thermal pollution, where you heat up water in an ecosystem and that uh, decreases the solubility of the gas. Um, so the increased temperature will cause a decrease in the dissolved oxygen that's in the water. And so now organisms will have less oxygen and they may die as a result of that. We saw some applications of pressure and solubility. Um, so for example, we saw that um, when you change the pressure, it won't affect the solubility of solids or liquids because they can't be compressed easily, but it will affect the solubility of gas. So if you decrease pressure, you decrease solubility, but if you increase pressure, you increase solubility of that gas. Uh, and so we saw some two great applications. We thought, saw the bends and we saw um, the soft drink application. Watch both videos and make some notes on them to make sure you can explain how solubility of gases um, applies to those applications there. And so right now we're going to take a look at um, factors that affect the rate of dissolving. So how fast something dissolves. Not, ne not necessarily how much dissolves or how fast it dissolves. So if you want to dissolve, let's say, some salt in water, um, one thing you might want to do is add some motion in there. Dissolving really relies on collision between solvent and solute particles. And so if you increase the collisions, the, the amount of times they sort of bump into each other, um, then you'll increase the rate of di dissolution, basically how fast something dissolves. So one of the simplest things you could do is simply stir, agitate. When you agitate, um, there's more collisions and so dissolving happens faster. It brings the solvent and solute particles into contact more frequently. So greater, greater agitation um, or stirring, in other words, motion, leads to some faster dissolving, right? You can, you can let your sugar sit there, your salt sit in the water, and it will dissolve slowly over time, but you can speed it up by simply stirring with a stir rod and that will speed up your, uh, your um, dissolving. Um, another thing you can do is the temperature. When you um, increase the temperature, uh, you have more kinetic energy, which is basically energy associated with moving. And so if there's more kinetic energy, there's more collisions and therefore faster dissolving. So when you increase the temperature of, let's say, water, the particles are moving faster and faster and faster and faster. They'll collide more and therefore it increases how fast it dissolves, in addition to increasing more dissolving there too. Um, so increasing temperature will increase the speed at which something dissolves because you have more kinetic energy. Um, and that leads to more collisions. And then another thing you can do as well is a, a manipulate your surface area, change your surface area. Surface area is basically how much of the surface of the particles are exposed. So this over here is a sugar cube. Um, and notice it's not broken up into smaller pieces. The only surface area exposed is basically what's on the outside here, but not what's on the inside. So this will have a low surface area because there's not much exposed to the solutes, or to the solvent over here. But if you were to crush that sugar cube up, it would dissolve faster because now you have all the surface area on the outside, but also the surface area on the inside exposed too. So there's, there's a greater surface area. So if you have a higher surface area, you have more collisions, you have faster dissolving as a result of that. So that's why it's easier to crush up you know, a powder or something you want to dissolve into a powder so that there's more surface area to dissolve it. And you might want to stir it so there's more surface area to dissolve it. Um, and then you might want to increase the temp, sorry, you might want to stir it so there's more collisions for faster dissolving, more agitation. And you might want to increase the temperature so there's more kinetic energy, more collisions, and therefore faster dissolving as well. So these are all factors that will affect how fast something dissolves. It affects the rate of dissolving. Uh, and that's different from solubility. Solubility is how much stuff dissolves in there. I'm just talking right now about the rate of dissolving. Okay, so how fast something dissolves. So this is a great application question. Um, you can see we have a mortar and pestle being used um, to increase the rate of dissolution of solids. And so we want to think about how that's happening. So in this image here, the mortar is the bowl, the pestle is this little stick over here, and we're crushing a solid up in hopes of making it dissolve faster. And so these are your choices here, and you can try to choose an option. Uh, pause the video, choose an option, and then uh, unpause to see if you're on the right track. So A, it provides more kinetic energy to particles of solute. B, it agitates the particles of solute. Or C, um, it increases the collision surface area of the solute. So we're crushing the solute here into a fine um, powder. What is that doing to increase the rate of dissolution? Uh, hopefully you chose C, 
Um, and what we're doing is when we're crushing the solid into a fine powder, we are um, increasing the surface area, kind of like we saw over here. When you crush the sugar cube, you increase the surface area that's exposed to the solution, and therefore there's more collisions. Uh, and so that's what would re lead to a faster dissolving of those solids using the mortar and pestle. So in our next video, we're going to take a look at solubility curves and do some um, practice problems with these solubility curves. Let's just go and fill out some notes, though, on um, the blanks on the rate of dissolution. So we saw that the three factors that affect um, rate of dissolution are surface area, motion, and temperature. The whole goal, if you want to increase how fast something dissolves, is to increase the collision between the solute and solvent particles. So if you increase the surface area by, let's say, crushing a solid, well, you have higher surface area, and as a result, more collisions between the um, solute and solvent particles, and so it should dissolve faster. Motion as well. So when you agitate or stir, for example, you're leading to more collisions um, and therefore faster dissolving again. Um, and it's more collision between, again, the solute and solvent particles. And then also temperature. If you increase um, temperature, um, you have more kinetic energy, which is energy of motion. And so because you have more motion happening there, more kinetic energy of motion, um, you have more collisions and as a result, therefore, faster dissolving. Temperature will also help to dissolve more in there as well, um, if it's a solid and liquid, of course, not if it's a gas. So temperature not only affects the rate of solubility, but it can also affect solubility itself. So not just how fast something dissolves, but how much can dissolve in there as well. Whereas your surface area and your motion, that won't really affect the solubility, meaning how much you can fit in, but it'll affect how fast whatever you could fit in dissolves in there. And so as I mentioned in the next video, we're going to analyze what's called solubility curves, um, and it'll just enhance our understanding of solubility overall.